What you're about to see might shock you. It might surprise you. What you're about to see, very few people will ever see that will walk this earth. Get ready to see your health from your brain's point of view. Dr. Weston Price um, wrote a book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. He's traveled all over the world and he was a dentist and he noticed that indigenous people that lived off of the land and had healthier lifestyles and ate healthier foods had wide palates, healthy teeth, and they had no need to remove wisdom teeth. However, he contrasted people living around the world in civilized areas, eating processed foods and a less healthy lifestyle, had narrow arches, narrow skulls, and you can see in this model here, you can see the crowding of the teeth. So one of the things that I look at as a physician doing the treatment that I'm doing is that the skull, um, based on this, this research and based on my observation, has a tendency to narrow as we get older. Um, it's very common to see a lot of elderly where they just look like they have their face kind of shrunk in. And the reality is our skull can shrink with age or it could fail to develop properly from a young age. There's actually something called mesenchymal tissue, which are like stem cells. And they're making up all these different joints um, that are between all the different bones of the skull. And you have the same type of tissue around your teeth as your teeth fit into your skull. And as you know, we know we can get braces and the teeth can move. And, um, and what you're not aware of, or some people aren't aware of, is that when that tooth moves, literally bone absorbs in one area and bone starts to grow in another area. Is due to certain lifestyle stresses, you get a lot of inflammation in the body. And this inflammation could be something you're aware of, it could be something that you're not aware of. And this inflammation shows up in the sinuses a lot, and sometimes it shows up when you're sleeping. The um, the low-grade inflammation can cause a narrowing of the sinuses as they get engorged with fluid and this causes a negative pressure that actually pulls the cranial bones in and collapses them. So now we've talked about just the, the concept of the cranium moving, the concept that the cranium can actually narrow and change shape. What happens with this is that you start to get an entrapment of the sphenoid bone. This entrapment of the sphenoid bone inhibits something that's very important that circulates oxygen and neurotransmitters throughout your brain and spinal cord, and this is called cranial rhythm. Let's take a look at cranial rhythm. Cranial rhythm is a slight movement of the skull that's centered around the sphenoid bone. It's not something that you can see or feel because it's so slight, but it's there. And its purpose is to distribute nutrients such as neurotransmitters and oxygen that bathe the central nervous system and keep it healthy. So if you have sleep apnea, snoring, or chronic sinusitis, we see some great benefit to those patients with this treatment. Um, what we're able to do is we're able to open up those sinuses and allow them to drain properly. When these bones are positioned properly, then fluid and, and mucus is able to drain out of those and you don't have stagnant fluid in there that can cause a low grade kind of a, a smoldering infection. And these infections could be mold, these infections could be bacteria, they could be viruses. And so by correcting these um, areas of the facial structures, you get a much better drainage of those areas which enhances the immune system. If you have chronic headaches, um, you might have had some sort of surgical procedure. Um, we've had patients that have had um, brain tumors removed, um, traumas to the head, it could even be the birthing process, is what we find is that there becomes adhesions to a structure called the dura. And the dura meat stands for tough. Um, the Latin name for this, um, this structure is dura mater, which means tough mother, actually. It has two 2,000 pounds per square inch of tensile strength. And what happens is you get adhesions to this dura, and the dura wraps around your spinal cord, it goes through this hole in the bottom of your skull, it wraps around all the lobes of the brain, and it becomes the whites of your eyes and your sinuses. And so when we do functional cranial release, 
what we're actually doing is we're releasing a lot of these dural adhesions which then can really help with a lot of pain syndromes around the face, head, and skull structures. So what we find by doing functional cranial release is that we get a much better circulation um, through the cranial rhythm. And when we're able to circulate oxygen and nutrients and neurotransmitters around the brain and spinal cord, what we find is a lot of patients that have certain neurologic conditions like vertigo and dizziness and balance disorders, Parkinson's, dystonia, different movement disorders, um, migraine headaches, these patients respond very well because we're able to facilitate this nutrient delivery to the brain and spinal cord. You see, your central nervous system is extremely sensitive to low oxygen levels and that's what's really key with this. Not only do we find benefit to flooding the brain and spinal cord with oxygen through um, correcting the cranial dysfunction and cranial rhythm, but the other things that we find of great benefit to patients is something called EWOT, or exercise with oxygen. I would encourage you to take a look at some of the videos I've done explaining how EWOT works. A lot of times after we see patients here, we'll have them go on an EWOT session to really flood that brain and spinal cord with oxygen. And depending on the type of conditions that we're seeing, we may actually do things to drive balance into their brain with functional neurology. Glutathione is another nutrient. It's a very powerful antioxidant. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll, we'll nebulize the glutathione here in the office and we'll have people actually bringing that glutathione level into the brain. Glutathione not only detoxifies a lot of toxins in the central nervous system, but glutathione actually handles a lot of inflammation and a lot of stress that the brain and spinal cord may be under. And it actually raises its capacity to change and, and, and regenerate itself. during our functional cranial release to really enhance the brain's ability to grow new connections. Uh, it's called neuroplasticity. Your brain is one of the most dynamic organs in your body. They call it neuroplasticity because plastic means to change. You see there is a vast network of nerves in your brain and they can all grow new connections when certain pathways have been disturbed. What we find with functional cranial releases are certain areas of the brain that need to be um, stimulated. And what this does is it actually allows the brain to relearn certain functions. Functionalcranialrelease.com